Today in the show we have Rockpool fractionalized NFTs, the Village DAO, and customer services, Mercado Bitcoin Football Club, and much more. I'm your host Mauricio Magaldi and this is Block Drops, your weekly digest on blockchain for business. These news are not a form of endorsement, sponsorship or encouragement for consumption and are meant for educational purposes only. With the increase of popularity of digital art, especially in those limited collections of randomly generated profile pictures, such as those monkeys uh, from the board apes, then the mutant apes came, and then the dogs, that the mutant, the, the board apes, kennel club, and yachts of every kind, and crypto punks, and etc. The digital art phenomenon actually took a foothold in the industry, and, and it's now a present thing, which also propelled the prices of many of these pieces of digital art to the hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, which in turn made them very inaccessible to the regular folks like me. Um, I don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, available to put on a piece of digital art, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's the reality of many, many people around the world. Now, because Web3 is composable, and because it's programmable, there are very interesting things coming about in this collectible art scenario, and this one's coming from Brazil. The, the team at NFT5, which is a collective in Brazil, launched Rockpool this week. Rockpool is a fractionalized platform for NFTs. So the idea is that you can now own a fraction of this world famous NFTs and all you need to do is to be able to pull the resources together and go buy the NFT with your pool of resources. You don't need to buy an NFT that costs hundreds of thousands. You can use the platform to allow you and a number of other unknown partners to rally behind one of these coveted NFTs sitting on Luxware, sitting on OpenSea just by the use of the Rockpool platform and smart contract. So what these guys built is the possibility of any collector to fractionalize the resource pool to buy a blue chip NFT. Blue chip is one of the top ranking NFTs in price and volume. And you can do that by connecting your um, Web3 wallet with your resources and connecting that into the, uh, into the Rockpool smart contract where you can pull resources with other participants in the market to go and buy a very pricey NFT. And then the fractions of those NFTs are you know, belong to whoever owns fractions of that particular quote-unquote Rockpool. A pretty interesting take to allow uh, more entrance in the market because this is a very interesting dynamic market. It creates a new level of liquidity because now with cheaper shares, it's possible for a bigger volume to be transacted through this new format. And it also enables people who are willing to participate, but they don't have the full fledged amount to actually take participation into any of these uh, fractionalized NFTs. We reported about fractionalized real estate a couple of weeks ago and the the principle is pretty much the same. You have an asset, in this case, it's a digital asset. The real estate is a real asset. And you pull buyers on a smart contract that then will amount the, the, the capital enough to buy that particular asset. In, in the case of the real estate, is a house. In the case of this, uh, art, it's digital art. It's, it's the NFT equivalent to digital art. So very interesting take. We're going to try and bring the NFT Fire guys uh, to, for a block talk so they can explain you know how they came about but that's pretty interesting uh, development in the industry and I'm hoping we'll see more of this because this is how 
uh, we democratize access to finance uh, by fractionalizing it. If you've been following us for some time, you likely came into any time I ranted about the state of UX in crypto. It's still a challenge, right? If you're a noob, it's complicated. You probably can't do much. If, you're, if you've been uh, on this for a while, you kind of mastered, but you're still going through the same steps. You're handling RPC, RPCs, you're changing your networks every time, you're approving a bunch of transactions. You probably don't know why, and it's super complicated. And we haven't been able to actually abstract that complexity for regular users and we're preventing us from growing as an industry while we don't. And if everything goes right, this is already complicated. If it doesn't, then it's completely impossible. You, you don't have anyone to call because that's the thing about being your own bank. You don't have anyone to complain about, right? So you either go to crypto Twitter and you get overloaded with noise or you call a friend who might be able to help you or might not, but it's, you know, it's not their job to do this. So consensus, which is one of the most important companies in the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, is uh, planning to launch what they call the village DAO. A DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, which is operated by decentralized people and, and governed autonomously. And the idea, the goal of this DAO called Village DAO is to provide customer care services to Web3 projects. So imagine you're, um, you're someone using someone that, someone's uh, DeFi protocol for borrowing and lending and something goes weird and you don't know how to do it. So what, what's going to happen is that the Village DAO will have community members who will be incentivized to contribute to the platform and its clients in ways that you can now call someone that's being paid by the DAO to actually provide you with support when things go weird, when everything happens and you don't know what to do. The idea is that the members of the DAO will be paid to provide customer care for the companies that are procuring the services or the village DAO, which kind of creates this prosperity between the projects that will have more people and people better served. So the protocols, the DeFi protocols who actually contract Village DAO will have the service and then the users will be able to contact the support teams from Village DAO to help them solve whatever is going on with the protocol at any given time. Which if it doesn't really create better UX in terms of things working or being smooth or being or abstracting complexity, at least it gives a escape route for people who have been trying to do something and can't. Because what we have currently is complex. We're still seeing the inner works under the hood of the car. And while that is true, we won't have soccer moms driving kids to practice because it's complicated. They need to fix the engine. So if this is to be a more professional, wider used, actually solving financial access to many, many people as it's claiming to do, then this comes in a no better time, right? We're entering the bear market. It means that there's less focus on prices and speculation and more focus on building things. And if we, in this bear market, come to terms with the crazy you actually have and fix it, then having a DAO providing customer service is very, very important. So, yes, let's do this. I think this is a great thing to come our way during the bear markets, but builders everywhere, don't forget, you have a lot of abstraction to provide so that we as an industry can gather more people around crypto. And speaking of DAOs, this piece of news came, came my way um, yesterday uh, when I was uh, prepping for the recording. And it's no one other than Mercado Bitcoin, the largest exchange in Latin America, announcing that they will create a real-world football club. 
or a soccer club for you guys in the US. Um, the, the Mercado Bitcoin team has been working a lot in the football space um, with the fan tokens and the uh, tokenization of uh, players' rights and royalties. And they were in negotiations with, uh, to sponsor a large club in Brazil. But that, that didn't pan out and then they announced that they're actually launching their own football club. And what's most interesting is that, yes, it's going to be run by a DAO. The DAO is going to be uh, governed by token holders. Uh, the initial batch of tokens is going to be airdropped to the 3.5 million clients uh, at Mercado Bitcoin. So they each one gets uh, a token and then the, uh, the tokens will be available for a secondary market within the exchange itself. And the goal of the, the, this organization is to actually organize themselves. I mean, they're going to launch during the World Cup in the Qatar by the end of the year. And next year, they're going to actually uh, work on scouting and bringing players and the, uh, the whole technical team and then launch uh, the team to play officially in the, uh, the federation, the CBF uh, tournaments next year, uh, the following year in uh, 2024. So the DAO is not only catered to the identity of the club, such as the name, the colors, um, the logo, the, but they will also uh, vote on the strategy and the financing and probably will vote who to buy, who to sell and who to actually put to play uh, during, uh, during the tournament. So interesting take because uh, football, the industry, the football industry, not exactly... Uh, the most professional. Um, in Brazil, we have a lot of money, but we also have a lot of broken clubs. And it doesn't really speak well in the dynamics, uh, the finances are all shady. So it's going to be really interesting to see this on-chain governance play the part on a industry that is plagued by lack of professionalism. And, you know, I think the opportunity to prove both if DAOs actually work in the real world and how the industry of soccer, the industry of football, uh, working well in that format might spark some forms of innovation that we haven't seen yet in the soccer world. So pretty excited to see how that goes, right? So the goal here of launching a football club with a DAO is like many moving targets, many innovative things, um, but obviously the, the Mercado Bitcoin team uh, is super competent, have been involved in, foot, in football for, um, you know, the, the recent years and they know the dynamics. So I, I, I trust that they will be able to actually set up the DAO and then the DAO will have to actually play its part in governing, <laughs> in governing the club, right? Um, the the, the, ten, the, 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 um, the uh, name that they're using right now is Metaverse DAO Football Team, which is the name of the project um, until they get a full approved name by the DAO. Um, they will start with uh, selecting the coach, the, the, the management and the technical team um, starting the January next year and then of course go scouting and then set up the team, train the team, probably do some uh, trials and then go full-fledged uh, competition mode in 2024. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how the token is going to uh, allow the DAO votes to happen. And uh, for those of you who are actually excited about soccer, which is not my case, I'm excited about the DAOs. Um, yeah, pay attention to projects like this because this might be a new trend in this uh, soccer industry. And because the week was packed full of news, here's more. GameStop launched its Web3 wallet. The Eurozone research showed that 10% of households have crypto exposure. Public Mint launches its wallet for regulated DeFi. The US Congress is moving ahead with bipartisan crypto bill. eBay partnered with OneOff for a sports NFT collectibles. Play to Own will be available in a partnership between the NFL and Mythical Games. Polygon, Ethereum's layer 2, announced an uncapped fund to allow the migration of Terra blockchain projects.
OpenSea announced Seaport that will offer NFT bartering. Mirror launched a NFT for writers. Pixelinks announced their Elixir, a music metaverse gaming platform. Rise is now available in Arbitrum for global payroll. Tether announced the launch of Mexican Pesos stablecoins. Metamask partnered with Asset Reality to provide help uh, to victims of uh, wallet scams. JP Morgan announced that they're using blockchain to settle lending collateral. Sao Paulo Football Club in Brazil is now accepting crypto for tickets through Bitso. Callaway Golf joined Lynx DAO as investor and strategic partner. Sexant inaugurates Sex to Earn. Don't ask me how. Flow Carbon from WeWork founder raised uh, money with A16Z to tokenize carbon credits. Stripe launched Bitcoin on ramp using Open Node. The UK's FCA. Uh, held a crypto sprint with uh, industry participants to improve its engagement with the crypto community. Swift, the TradFi messaging services, is now experimenting with blockchain for CBDC interoperability, and Netflix launched a series where apparently you can read and buy an NFT. Block Drops Podcast is available on Anchor FM, Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Numis, and iColab. You can reach out to us through Instagram at Block Drops Podcast, on Twitter at Block Drops Pod, and via email blockdropspodcast at gmail.com. Shoutouts today to the people who share the links you will find in the episode notes. Charles Atkins, Tom Stafford, Paulo Jacinto Rodrigues, Sharon Oller, Alexandre Vazarelli, Vinícius Antunes Vasconcelos, Chris Dixon, Chris Skinner, Labi Ben Mimon, David Son, Jacqueline Melanek, Brian Sania, Mario Gabrielli, Ender Fall, Simon Taylor, Nadine Tavares, Mike Dudas, Camilo Russo, Roberto Dagnoni and Andrea Abrams. Stay tuned at blockchainrio.com.br for the biggest blockchain event in Latin America. And don't forget to leave your ratings on your favorite player. This is all for today. Stay rare, stay weird. LFG.